during the game. All of a sudden, he's coming down. He's on the left-hand side. He's dribbling. Goes between his legs. And dunks the ball. It was like, oh my gosh. You hear the saying, like, you changed. Like, you're damn right I changed. <laughs> I, I, of course I changed. I'm trying to better myself. Why haven't you changed? I want to be the greatest of all time. And that's just my mindset. Mm -hmm. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have LeBron James level talent at something, and I want you to find it, embrace it, and use it to make a difference. Now, I started the Mentor Me series to try to learn from people who've done a lot more than us, and hopefully by spending a little bit more time with them, some of their beliefs, mindsets, way of thinking, way of seeing the world seep into us to help us become the best version of ourselves. So today, we're going to learn from one of the best, LeBron James, and how to do the impossible. Mentor Me, LeBron. Let's kick it off with rule number one, be the chosen one. When I first heard about this young kid from Akron, we were looking for the next big basketball superstar. Magazines, newspapers, internet, Sports Illustrated had him on the cover as the chosen one. So I take a bunch of Nike executives down to his game, and I say, hey, hey kid, I brought all my Nike guys down. This is the time to shine. Show us something. Well, during the game, all of a sudden, he's coming down, he's on the left-hand side, he's dribbling, goes between his legs, and dunks the ball. It was like, oh my gosh, everybody in the whole arena went mad, it was crazy. By the time he was a, a senior, everybody in the country knew this was the guy. James shows maturity well beyond his age, and the numbers he's putting up have garnered adulation from scouts. And you know, um, every day you gotta go out there and work because there's someone out there working too. And if you stop, I think they can pass you up. Rule number two: maximize your potential. One thing about myself, um, I'm real critical of myself. Um, I believe I can't improve unless I want to improve. And ultimately, I want to become the greatest basketball player or the best player LeBron James can be. Now, if that means I become better than Michael Jordan or better than Kobe Bryant or Oscar Robinson, then so be it. But if not, I want to maximize my potential. So um, the times of my rookie year where I was struggling, I found a way to get through it myself with the help of friends and you know, not having those you know, yes men around me because I wasn't playing with them. For me, I understand that a lot gets thrown upon my plate and a lot gets thrown upon what I do. So for me, my personal goals is to win championships. And at the end of my career, what I was able to accomplish will make me happy and make me satisfied because I don't play for, I don't play for what people expect for me to do anymore. You know, I want to be the greatest of all time and that's just my mindset. Mm -hmm. Wherever they lay me at the end of my career, you know, if it's you know, one or nine or 12 or whatever the case may be, Smitty, I, I had a great time on playing this game that I love to play. Rule number three, persevere. You know, you hear the saying, like, you changed. Like, <laughs> you're damn right I changed. <laughs> I, I, of course I changed. I'm trying to better myself. Why haven't you changed? And that's the things that you have to deal with, even as a kid growing up playing ball. You, you, you look back and you even go like Muhammad Ali and, and the things that he had to go through. They basically told him, you're the heavyweight champion of the world, but you have your, your beliefs and your religion. No, we don't care about that. We're gonna strip you. And since you don't wanna go to the army and fight for us, then we're gonna send you to jail for three years. Like, and, and that's it, without question. And when you are one to wanna think outside the box, people don't know how to take it. Dr. Martin Luther King is another prime example, a guy who put his life on the line every single day for the betterment of life itself. And in our small world, us as basketball players, but us as African Americans, we still feel the hate off decisions we make that we feel like is best for us. And because people can't make the decision for you, the only thing they can do is to begin a rally of hate. And we have to go through it. Rule number four, just give your all. As well as we played last game, it ain't gonna be enough to win tonight. You gotta give more, dog. 
You gotta protect more, you gotta help more, you gotta sacrifice more in order to get this win. Well, my expectation is always gonna be high. Just because how I feel as an individual, I feel like I continue to get better every year. I continue to bust my butt in the off season to get ready for a season to go into June. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I look forward to us competing for NBA championship this year. Mm -hmm. um, and, and every night I go on the court, I approach it that way. Mm -hmm. On us trying to, to get better for the long-term goal. Um, Short-term goal, we want to just continue to get better every night. I set out a goal two years when I came back to bring a championship to the city. I gave everything that I had. I pour my heart, my blood, my sweat, my tears to this game, and against all odds, against all odds, I don't know why we want to take the hardest road. I don't know why the man above gives me the hardest road, but it's nothing the man above don't put you in situations that you can't handle. And I just kept that same positive attitude, like, instead of saying, why me? They're saying this is what he want me to do. You have two men over there at the table who've been around this league a long time, and they just said at the end of this ball game that this is your greatest achievement, getting this group to the finals. Yeah, we've been counting out for a long time this season, and um, you know, right right around the trade deadline, no matter if we made a trade or not, at that point in time, I kind of just switched my mindset on saying let's let's get the most out of this season I can, and I'm I'm determined to get the most. I'm trying to squeeze this orange so it's no more juice left and um, this is a heck of an accomplishment for our ball club. You know, without our all-star power forward as well for basically two games, this, this team was undefeated in the postseason and for, uh, at home and for us to do this and for me to be able to lead these guys, uh, it's a treat. And rule number five, the last one before a very special bonus clip, do the impossible. 2011, he's up against Dallas in the NBA Finals. So much pressure is on LeBron, everybody's expecting him to win, and he loses in six games. He was devastated. The media really killed this guy. But what did LeBron do? The very next year, he gave you his third MVP trophy, his first Finals MVP, and his first ring. You see those things and you wonder, is he human? And when you fail the way that he fails, when the whole world is watching, it's inspiration to see this guy really come back and do it the way he did. What makes him great on that level is the fact that he's able to do the impossible. He inspires myself and many that you can do anything that you put your mind to. Now, I've got a really special bonus clip from LeBron on how to know your worth that I think you're really going to enjoy. But before that, I want to know from you which message resonated more with you from today's clip. Maximize your potential or persevere. Vote down in the comments below. Looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon and enjoy the bonus clip. Being a, like a, a first generational money maker in the household is a scary thing. And for 18 year old, I go from being sitting in the classrooms in May, graduating high school to being a multimillionaire a month later. For me, it was like, holy shit, now we're in this room and this shit is real. It's not like I had that moment, we were sitting in that room at Reebok and Paul Fireman was very smart, he said to you, you know, I know you're going to go see Nike and Adidas, but I'm going to offer you $10 million today if you don't go see them and shake my hand. Right. He offered, he wrote you a $10 million check in that room and you turned it down. I can't say I would have turned it down. I, I mean, I think in the room I said, yo, let's take this check and get the hell out of here. But you turned it down. Was it, so you, what was that th thinking? Do you, do you remember what right. you were thinking and why you did it? Right. I mean, I remember, uh, first of all, it was a, the, one of the longest damn tables I ever the seen in my life. Table, bo yeah, table yeah, the longest table, boardroom table ever. one of the longest boardroom tables I ever seen in my life. And um, I had no idea what he was doing at the other end of the table. I just seen him writing. Yeah. And uh, he was talking, had his head down. He was making sure he didn't get anything wrong on that <laughs> <laughs> on that check. And when he slid it down there and he said, listen, if you take this right now, you know, you just promised me you won't go talk to Nike or Adidas. 
You know, you can take this right now. And 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 I was I was lost for words at the, at the beginning. I mean, shit, we flew in. I flew in from Akron, Ohio, yeah. from Spring Hill, from, like, from the projects. From the projects. Yeah. I mean, th- our rent is like seventeen dollars a month. <laughs> exactly. And now I'm looking at a ten million dollar check that you can leave with. Yeah, and go to high school and go back to the classroom the next, the day, next day. I was telling people that you were going to homeroom the next morning. <laughs> I was going to homeroom the next morning. So I'm like, holy shit. That's my first initial thing. And then I, I, for some odd reason, I started thinking, like, if this guy, which is a, he's a great guy, too. I still love him to this day. He's an unbelievable guy. guy. But if he's willing to give me a $10 million check right now, what is it to say that Nike or Adidas is not willing to give me 20 or 30, you know, up front? You know, or to say that maybe the upfront money is not even the biggest thing, you know, maybe let's start thinking about the back end, you know, and, you know, I've always, you know, and that comes from, you know, my uncles as well, just, you know, never put all your eggs in one basket, you know, and give, give it an opportunity, give people an opportunity to, to say what they, what they got to, to pitch themselves. And, you know, we all, we always say, listen, we're going to hear all three companies. We want to hear all three companies, what they have to say, you know, what's their plan? And um, I can't, I still can't believe I left that 10 million. I can't believe it either. If you tell yourself a story long enough, you start to believe it. Once you believe it, you act like it. I have tussled with a whale out of handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. Now, you know I'm bad. Only last week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. <laughs> the fundamental key to success It can take between 18 and 254 days of taking action for a new habit to stick. I've created a new course called 254 Confidence where every single day for 254 days I will be sending you a video between 30 seconds and 5 minutes long that you start your morning with around making you feel confident. It's absolutely free. Check out the link in the description below to get access.